Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Talk presented by Doc Dean's Pools. Today we're talking about the Pool RX. This right here is the Pool RX. It's something that's gathering, I think, quite a lot of coverage in the uh, pool community lately. Um, it's been around for a long time. How long has it been around? I think it's like 1994, the manual says or something. Okay. Uh, yeah, 1994, they say they've been around. Um, I remember these in the earlier 2010s mm -hmm. kind of popping up. I know we used one in our home. Very, very mixed reviews um, early on. Lots of people, you know, said they were having problems, but I think that was down to a little bit of naivety with them. Um, and we'll, we'll go through that a little bit more. Um, and the naivety aspect is the chemical aspects of your pool okay. uh, and why you would want to use something like this. Right. So the Pool RX, what the heck is it? What's it meant to do? Well, basically it's de described as a chelated mineral algaecide. Um, inside this basket, there is a metal sleeve containing minerals. Those minerals are um, they're a secret to the company, but pretty much they're going to be copper-based. It's a copper-based algaecide, but it's how these minerals react with the metal casing. Mm -hmm. That is the really cool thing and why this thing works. Right. Um, now, as opposed to a lot of other algaecides that we use, we tend to use a liquid algaecide, uh, something that we have to pour directly into the pool itself. Yep. Um, usually with those, you have to keep someone out of the, the pool for a significant period of time, right? Yeah. Now the beauty with these is that they go directly into the pump basket per the manufacturer. I think you can put it in the skimmer. You can. Um, but we, whenever we've used them, um, we always put them in the pump basket for the, for, I, I believe the best result. Can't really speak to how well it would work in the skimmer because we've not done it. Uh, no, no, we use the, we use the pump basket method. Um, and it seems to work for us. Right, um, so what that means is constantly the water is gonna be going over the copper in here. Uh, it's gonna be constantly reacting with the minerals and that's what's gonna kill the algae. Because this is this is an algae side basically, right? Yes. It's, it's a solid form of algae killer. Um, I know way, way back in the day before I knew anything about pools, people used to put blocks of silver in main drains because silver is a highly effective algaecide as well, correct? Yes. Um, and I know there are several liquid silver um, algaecides out there as well. That's correct. Um, but I think most of the industry is uh, tending to go to copper these days. That's right, um, much more affordable. Um, it, the old boys here in um, central Florida, um, the guys that have been around since the 70s dealing with the with the larger volume pools, the hotel pools, the resort pools, mm -hmm. um, would tell you that back in the day when silver was affordable, they would tie a block of silver into the main drain um, in the pools and it was an effective algaecide. So, it's an algaecide, its job mm -hmm. is to kill algae in pools. Um, I think the main question is, does it do it? I think it does quite effectively. Absolutely. Um, we had reservations, we'd used these in the past, um, and we did actually speak about, um, you know, mixed results and with, but with inexperience. Mm -hmm. um, pool chemistry is, is relatively straightforward. Um, once you get it into the parameters that you need to be, um, and that will be, for this kind of thing, this is going to be low chlorine. This isn't, this doesn't work with high chlorine. And in fact, you don't want it to work with high chlorine because another advantage of using the Pool RX is it's, it's a low chlor protector. So if your chlorine drops out to 0.5 parts per million, mm -hmm. it's really not going to matter because this baby is still going to be working as an algaecide. Okay, the pool's not sanitizing as well, but you're not going to get an algae bloom because the algaecide is still working. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's... Which is where we actually kind of fell into this thing, I think, over this past summer. Yep. Because um, we were having mm. some pools that we were really struggling with algae blooms um, that we just couldn't keep stabilizer in, whether they were leaking or whether they were just being overused by people. Um, particularly in the summer times here we, in Florida, we get a significant amount of rain, so people are draining their pools. Um, almost weekly. I know we have one client that um, she likes to drain her pool every single yeah, week. Absolutely. Um, which, you know, fair. Uh, water's over the ball nose, you've got to lower it. 
Um, but with that, you get issues trying to keep cyanuric acid in. And this thing gives you a little bit of extra time before algae starts growing. Um, I, I think it's really great for buying time. Absolutely. You know? It's, think of it, think of it as an insurance policy. Think of it as you've got your investment in your pool, you've got your pool guy coming around or you maintain your own pool. Um, you need a, you want to have an insurance because you, typically a pool service contractor will be working on a seven day cycle. If he services your pool on a Friday, he'll be back next Friday to service your pool and so on and so on, Friday to Friday to Friday. Um, as you say, this is Florida. We get thunderstorms at 10 a.m. and the temperature's at 95 degrees. Then we'll get the temperature and the humidity going crazy. Then we'll have another thunderstorm at two or three o'clock. All of this has a detrimental effect on pool chemistry. Mm -hmm. There's your insurance policy. That, that will keep you straight. That will give you a fighting chance to get through seven days. Mm -hmm. um, now, there are some companies that like to throw these into every single pool that they have. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that's necessary? Do you think that everyone should have one of these regardless of whether they have problems or not? Um, that, that's, that's the million dollar question. Um, to be honest with you, there would be no reason not to use this in every single pool. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to, to reduce your chlorine demand. Right. So if, you, if you're running a salt system, you can reduce your, your, um, your output from your salt cell. If you're running a chlorinator, you can reduce your amount of shock and your tablets that you're going to put into your chlorinate. That is something that Pool RX is uh, very forward on, uh, particularly with us. They like to tell contractors in particular how much it can reduce our chemical costs. I will say that in all of our pools that do have these, even the ones that are the most extreme cases in the summer, I wouldn't say it decreased our cost on the most extreme cases. But what I would say is that it solved the issues that we had yes. with the chlorine bottoming out. It meant that I would go to a pool that if I put in like a gallon of liquid chlorine into a pool um, over the summertime on a place where I'm expecting that I should be coming back in every single week, uh, the chlorine would be around three to five parts per million. Um, instead, it was dropping up to zero and I had a terrible green pool. Um, this thing made my chlorine dosing effective. I don't think we've ever used this on a regular um, homeowner's pool to see if it does reduce chemical uh, necessities. No, I think that's something we need to do in the summer. That's something we will do. Um, you know, we went into the, the experiment of using one of these purely as an experiment and to give a bit of feedback to the people who watch these videos. Um, just to give an honest opinion, because there's lots of testimonials out there that people will say, oh, they're fantastic. There's lots of people out there that won't use them because um, they, they believe that they stay in their pools. Now, a pool staining by using a pool RX, as we spoke before, there, there's definitely copper in there. There's no two ways about it. Mm -hmm. And copper will stay in a pool if you allow your chemistry to get so far out of balance yeah. that the, the copper that's held in the water in suspension is going to be plated onto the pool surface. Right. Now, the beauty of these things is it's chelated. Now, chelated means that that copper ion or whatever it is, is locked into the water. When that dissolves, what it is, there's a, there's a, there's a metal casing in here that's packed full of the, metal, the minerals, and a lot of that's copper minerals. You put it in your pump basket, you start your pump up, and over the course of the week, this will dissolve completely and completely cover the filter. Um, with with all of the mineral content from this little baby. And then what happens is, as that water passes over those minerals, it takes the minerals into the water, comes back through the pump, and goes over this metal sleeve. Now, it's the reaction between the minerals and the metal sleeve that acts as an algaecide mm -hmm. and destroys whatever algae is there, however it does it. Right. Um, if you have excessive chlorine in your pool or you use calcium hypochlorite with a regular copper-based algaecide you take the chance 
of plating that copper out onto the walls of the pool. And basically that means that when you put a copper-based algae side in your pool, you'll see that it turn the, the pool water a dark blue color. It's a beautiful color. It's a really nice color to look at, mm -hmm. but it's copper. And then it gets into the water. If you then mess up your pool chemistry, you take the chance of having that copper contained in that water play onto the walls of the pool and it will turn the walls of the pool turquoise. Some people like it and say, oh, my pool is a lovely blue color. We look at it and we say, oh dear, that pool is stained. Yeah, because it's not controlled. That's not going to happen with this because this baby is, as we said, chelated. It's held in suspension. It's treated in such a way that you can't plate this onto the walls of your pool. So if someone tells you, I used that and it turned my pool blue, there was something going on with that water long before you went anywhere near that. Right, you're throwing it into something that's got like alkalinity of 40 and pH. Yeah, absolutely, right. you know, it's, it's got issues. Um, so, <laughs> how long does one of these things take to start really working? Um, well, I think it depends on case by case basis a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if we go by if we go by the pool that we really wanted to test this in, we had a pool here in Central Florida that uh, we couldn't keep it week to week um, any chemistry in the pool. It just it wouldn't hold chemistry. Um, the pool gets used a lot. The pool does have a slight leak. We had stabilizer issues with it. We had chlorine issues with it. We were having all kinds of problems. Um, and we it decided- It also backs onto a golf course, right? It also backs onto a golf course, yeah. So you have all of those things working against it. And that's another thing. This thing reduces phosphates in the water as well. That's so, a whole nother thing. That that's that's a whole same. nother thing. So phosphates getting into the water will turn your pool green overnight. Now, backing onto a golf course, and I'm not saying that golf course superintendents aren't doing their job properly and are being irresponsible by what they're doing, but to keep that golf course green and lush, mm -hmm. they are clearly putting down chemical. And a lot of the chemical they are putting down there is phosphates. Yeah. Phosphates, nitrates, nitrogen, all that kind of stuff. And that can get into your pool. It can get in there and it can cause your pool initially. So back to the pool that we had, we couldn't hold chlorine in the pool. We were having all kinds of issues and we decided, you know something, let's give this baby a go. Uh, we cleaned the filter, cleaned the pool, got it up and running, got it exactly how we wanted it. Week later, we dropped one of these in the pump basket. Mm -hmm. A week later, we looked at the pool, thought, you know, is there an improvement? Not really. I'm not seeing too much going on. But then after two weeks, oh my. Yeah. I, you know, it was it was night and day. It was, I would see it, I would have seen that pool one week and it had a tint of green on it and it really couldn't be used. And then we came back two weeks later and oh uh, yeah, it's clear. Yeah. And I would say for the last three to four months, that thing's been ticking over in that pool. We're almost due to put a booster pack in there to um, get right. it back up again. Yeah, uh, that, that was gonna be my, my next question. Um, mm. So we know it takes around probably two weeks to four, two to four weeks to really notice like, oh my, this is hugely different now. Yeah. Um, I would say in my extreme case that I used it on, uh, a little bit further south of here, um, a pool that I struggled with all summer, I would show up one week and it would look like a lake. I would come back after doing a treatment on it, it would look fine. And then just with, with the rain that we had this past summer um, in 2018, it was torrential. Um, it really, really, really suffered with groundwater. Um, I would say that after three weeks of putting one of these in here, all my own problems pretty much disappeared. You know? Um, it, it works in incredibly extreme cases. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna take around two to four weeks to get going. How long should it last? I think the manufacturer, Pool RX, claims six months. Mm -hmm. We aren't six months into our test yet, I don't think. No. Um, I think but we're approaching it in the next month or two. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll probably do a follow-up video to, to talk about how it, or what happens really when it starts to fade off. Sure. Because right now I'm noticing nothing fading from no. a, any any of them that we have in. As right am I. Now. And as am I. And the pool that I, as I say, I had that we couldn't um, hold too much water in um, or we couldn't hold the stabilizer in. It had a slight water leak and, you know, bits and pieces going on. 
we've we've noticed no drop off every single week there is chemistry in that pool every single week that pool is looking good we've extolled the virtues of pool rx i think i think yeah i think so I, I, you know i, I, I would good. yeah i we went we went into this with a with a degree of a degree of doubt we'd heard lots of good things about them we'd also heard some nightmares but you know the nightmare stories just seem to be you know, I think they're stories. I think they are stories. I think I think there was much more going on that, than people would realise. Yeah. Um, for me, it's it's yeah, it's a plus. It's it's very good. And you know, we we don't have any um, we don't have anything to gain from giving this a positive or negative review. This is totally an honest opinion, and in my honest opinion. It works. Yeah, I mean, I've interacted with the companies a couple of times. In, in, well, I've interacted with the company a couple of times on Instagram, but I don't know anyone there. Uh, so you can't get us any free ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I wish. <laughs> this is the pool industry. We work on freebies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have loved to have spoken with the rep that we had in town. I didn't know he was coming into our supply house when he did. Mm. Um, I'd have loved to have been able to sit down and have a chat with him. Let's talk about the price on one of these. What are you talking about if you are someone going into a pool supply store looking to buy one of these things? Ooh. Yeah, if you're looking to buy one of these uh, either online or at your local pool store, you're looking between uh, 50 and $70 for the blue one, which I think does up to 20,000 gallons. I think it's actually 40,000. I think the black one's 40. And then they have a couple of different variations. I think it's in the back of the book. Oh, oh yeah, 20,000. Yeah, so, so the blue one will do up to about 20,000 gallons. The black one does, what, 30,000? Yep. Um, that's large enough for most homeowners. Right, this um, is absolutely big enough. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think we've put in a single black one yet. I think they're no. all blue. Um, so you're looking at that. So if you're getting six months, it breaks down to around $10 a month. Mm -hmm. Realistically, if you're getting six months out of it, I think at 10 bucks a month, um, I think that's really good value for money for the peace of mind that you get for it. Well, yeah, just over $2 a week. You know, um, $2, that's that's not even a gallon of liquid chlorine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if, you, and if you save a gallon of liquid chlorine a week, yeah, and you, you do it every other week, yeah, well, it kind of offsets a little bit, and it's like paying... Yeah, you know further back. And, you, you know, you don't get the crazy, nasty smells of high chlorine content, having to go to the pool store and yeah. drag it back in the back of the trunk of the car. Yeah, I was about to say, particularly mm -hmm. if you're if you take care of your own pool, um, this will save you trips to the store. Yeah. Um, provided that your pool already doesn't have issues. Yeah. Um, if you already know your pool chemistry fairly well and you know how to maintain it, this will just make things easier. Okay, so um, Pool RX, uh, it's a really solid algicide. It's literally a solid algicide. Um, it's it, a phosphate remover. It, it's a phosphate remover. It works by um, the reaction between the minerals and the metal collar that's inside of here. Um, when water's running over it in the pump basket, it picks up that reaction and it kills all the algae that's running through it. Um, if you're going to try and buy one online or at a pool store, you're looking around $60. Um, they should last about six months and they friggin' work. Yes. What, what can I say they work? This has been the Pool RX review on Tech Talk presented by Doc Dean's Pools. I'm James. This is Mike. Come back with you next week. <laughs>